What's up, Night Owls? Tilly here back with another Rhyme of the Frost main video, and today we're going to be talking about the white worm, Arviaturus. Arviaturus is a female ancient white dragon, and she has two scripted encounters in the Rhyme of the Frost main book, but you can feel free to add more of this based off of the lore that I provide here in this video or any more, any further research that you do online. She is a an essential character, although really dangerous. She will clap your entire party short order and is is by far the most dangerous thing in Icewind Dale. And this includes the Frost Maiden and Ariel Arthas. She is well known throughout Ten Towns. So if you have a character in your party who who has uh, Ten Towns in their backstory, maybe they're from Ten Towns, you could probably give them advantage on that history check, or just give it to them that they know about this this ancient white dragon that flies around Icewind Dale. And you could also introduce or, or hint at this dragon with stories from local patrons in the tavern or some fancy artwork or statues scattered around whatever buildings they end up in in Ten Towns. Just kind of slowly hint that there's a dragon out there, this ancient dragon who is incredibly dangerous. Now, I mentioned that the book had two scripted encounters, one of which the party encounters Arvia Turris while they're out roaming, ar roaming around Icewind Dale, and they happen to see the dragon fly over and snatch up a, a, a creature and eat it and then just kind of fly off. If that happens during a blizzard, Arvia Turris is hidden underneath snow and the party steps on her, shakes them off, and then flies off. And if you are if you have some uppity party member that decides to try to attack the dragon, don't bother rolling initiative. The, the breath weapon alone will completely wipe out your party depending on the level. So I would just have, if, if one party member decides to act up, just have her snatch them up and fly off. Go drop a new character that's not an idiot. The other encounter with Arvia Turris is at the Dark Duchess, which is a location in Chapter 2. I did a video on it. I'll leave that link in the description if you want to look over that. But essentially, the party will show up at a wrecked ship on the coast of the Sea of Moving Ice, and they'll find RV, part of Arvia Turris' treasure hoard, and then Arvia Turris will show up and actually speak to the party. And this is where you kind of get a glimpse at her madness, and I'll cover that more in a second. But this this encounter also involved is, is not a combat encounter. You need to run away from this one, or the, the party needs to run away. And again, if a party member gets axed up and decides to attack her, snatch them up, drop a new character, and the rest of the party can escape. That can be that can be a means to provide the rest of the party to escape. Thank you for your noble sacrifice, dumb rogue. Now, Arviaturus actually has quite a bit of lore behind her outside of what's provided in the Rhyme of the Frostmaiden module. There was an article published in Dragon Magazine in 2001. It was this column that they did called The Worms of the North where they talked about different dragons, and Arviaturus was actually one of them, 2001. And I'll provide a link to that article in the description. It's going to cover a lot more information than what I'm going to go over here in this video. I'm just going to kind of touch on some of those subjects. But I'll leave a link to that in the description. Definitely go read that if you want to really dive into this, to this dragon's history. Now, she is known throughout Icewind Dale as the White Worm, and she's actually friendly to Ten Towners. She doesn't really harass them. She mo mostly prefers eating polar bears and elk and things like that. But there was a time when she used to eat sailors along the Swords Coast, and she had the nickname Ice Claws during that time. Now, just to refresh, she's an ancient white dragon, which puts her age at minimum a 1,000 years old. So she's got a bit of history to her. Now, there was a time where this dragon was actually the steed to a wizard known as Meltheron, and you could actually see Meltheron's corpse in the Arviaturus artwork in the Rhyme of the Frostmaiden book. But when he was alive, he captured Arviaturus when she was younger, and uh, over time, her, her, as, a, as a captive, eventually that Stockholm Syndrome set in, and she started to fall in love with Meltheron. After several centuries of serving this wizard Meltheron, the magic that was keeping him alive started to fade. Age eventually caught up with him and he passed away. Arvia Turris did not take this loss very well. She fell into this deep, lonely depression. And when the party actually encounters her at the Dark Duchess, she still speaks to Meltheron on her back, the corpse of the wizard on her back, like he's still alive. And that just really... That really hits different. When I read that in the book, I, that that was kind of rough, and that could really you could really play that up, play up that loneliness and that depression. That's, in my opinion, what makes Arvia Turris so scary. There's evil characters that are just evil for evil's sake, and then you have this character that you can actually 
sympathize with and and there's just something about that that makes her makes it tragic and scary at the same time and that's what i love about this this dragon in particular during melthron's time with arvia Turris, he taught her everything that he could about dealing with wizards how to take down those spell casters and she's learned a lot over time melthron's actually gifted her with some magic items specifically for her to wear to wear which is provided in the article it's a ring of spell storing, and she also has the ability to use staves and wands. And she's also specialized in recognizing what spells wizards are casting. So she can recognize if you if you have a spell caster, and for some reason they end up in combat, maybe at the higher level of the campaign they decide to go chase her down and fight her. It's a good epic fight. She can recognize spells being cast. She can use magic items. She is incredibly proficient in dealing with wizards because she spent so much time with Melthron as a, as a servant to a wizard. One of my favorite things that the article mentions is that after Melthron passed away and the loneliness started to set in, there is a set of criteria that, that Arvia Turris will go by in order to spare a sailor's life that she snatches up to eat. And that criteria is if they don't attack her, if they don't like wizards, and they're quick enough to express a desire to talk to her. She will reciprocate, talk to them, alleviate some of that loneliness, and eventually uh, spare them their life. And she'll usually keep them around for about a month, as long as they don't steal any of Melthron's stuff or attack her or anything like that. And she'll actually go out and give them a ride back to town or wherever they want to go. Arvi Turris has actually developed a relationship with some pretty high-up people throughout the Swords Coast, mainly the leader of Waterdeep herself, Laryl Silverhand. Laryl Silverhand will sometimes visit Arvia Turris and tell her stories and just keep her, overall keep her company. Arvia Turris is also well known in Candlekeep for a reason that I find absolutely hilarious. A writer in Candlekeep actually wrote about Melthron, Arvia Turris's wizard, and it wasn't particularly positive. He actually wrote negatively about Melthron, which resulted in Arvia Turris showing up to Candlekeep ripping the roof off of the building and snatching up this writer and setting the record straight. And the article goes on to say that a month later, that writer wrote an entire book about the great deeds of Melthron and Laryl Silverhand of Waterdeep personally delivered a copy of the book to Arvia Turris in her lair. It also says that she stayed with the wizard for a 10 day talking about Melthron, talking about the book. And I like to imagine that Laryl went there and kind of read Arvia Turris, the bedtime story about Melthron, like read this book to her till she fell asleep kind of thing. I really love that dynamic with Laryl. And by the way, if you want to see more of Laryl, she's actually in the module Waterdeep Dragon Heist. And she may be in Mad Mage as well. I, I know she's she's the leader of Waterdeep and Waterdeep Dragon Heist takes place in Waterdeep and you actually meet Laryl. So you want a little bit more about her, she's in there. But this video is about Arvia Turris, so let's get back to it. Now, the Worms of the North article actually contradicts the Rhyme of the Frostmaiden book in that it says that humans are a favorite prey of Arvia Turris. But in Rhyme of the Frostmaiden, it says that she doesn't really mess with Tin Towners. She has, like, a respect for them. So the way I interpret that is maybe during her youth or during her her younger days, she, she ate a lot of humans, but... Now that she's an ancient white worm and age is starting to catch up with her, she's kind of mellowed out a bit. So she gets along with humans. That's how I interpret that. That's one way you can take that so that they're they're both right in a way. Keep in mind that if you have your party visit Arvia Turris's lair, she does know how to use magic any magic items that may be in her hoard. And the article actually mentions a few that might be in there. A ring of spell triggering, a crystal ball, which she knows how to use and she can scry with and a wand of unseen servants, which she uses to retrieve items that, that are out of her reach due to her huge size. She'll use unseen servants with from the wand to kind of reach things that she can't, and, and the ring, obviously, and any other magic items you put in there. It could be really a really interesting encounter having this ancient white dragon using magic items, any kind of wand, scrolls, things like that, a potion, who knows. Things like that can make that encounter really interesting. She's really also Melthron's spell book. And the article says that it's DM's discretion. What's in that specifically? So go nuts with that one. Put a bunch of spells in there. If you have a wizard in your party, you know, by the time they're high enough level to get in there, don't be afraid to throw some ninth level spells on that spell book and lower Melthron's spell book will be pretty, 
pretty thick, pretty packed. Keep in mind, he did have a pet white dragon. And that's it for our viewers. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, you know how YouTube works. Hit those buttons, leave a comment down below. Let me know what NPC you want to see covered next. I might do one or two more of these before Candlekeep comes out. And speaking of Candlekeep, if you want to play in a Candlekeep game or run and you're looking for players or looking for a DM for a Candlekeep game, which comes out next month, make sure you join the Discord. Link in the description. Come by, ask questions. Let me know what you think. And as always, I'll see you at sundown.